Okay, welcome to the first episode of Gladiator Diaries with myself and, of course, the main man, Moddy B. Uh, before we dive into the topics for today, mate, how is the nose? Um, it's uh, doing all right. I'm like, I'm, I'm like trying to see within the light, like how straight it is. But um, <laughs> I had a, essentially I had a septo rhinoplasty. I had literally, so I got a little bit. So the bone, so it's not completely straight, but it's straighter than it was before. Um, so they moved a bit of the bone and they cleared the airwaves. My airwaves are now coming back. Like it's been what two weeks now. Obviously, they said it's gonna. There's loads of swelling in there and you know and stuff like that. They said that'll take time to heal up. But I mean, I'm pretty much getting back like pretty swiftly back into the swing of things in terms of training obviously so um yeah i mean we're doing all good mate i'm going to be looking way sexier i'm going to be having much more air going through my lungs so this is all positives mate was it impacting you that much before you had it done i believe so um i believe it would be somewhat of a drickus duplicy effect you That's know what i was gonna mention um, you know. because I mean, yeah, they, they literally, the doctor said 70% less oxygen intake. Like, that's a lot. If you consider that that is what you need uh, going into fights, like Tyson Pedro fight, again, you've got to take into account jet lag. I got there Wednesday at four in the morning, um, you know, like I said, <laughs> and then I fought on Sunday in the morning. So those things can play into your cardio. And also, if you're using your mouth, I've been, I've been so badly, I'm talking for years since. Because after the Cleo fight, first sparring session, bang, right hook straight to the face, straight to the nose, broken. I think my septum was already fucked at that point. I've had it broken three more times since. So if you can imagine, and that's just in training. <laughs> so if you can imagine, my my septum was just getting worse and worse and worse. So my cardio is already good, but I know that it will definitely make like a massive fucking difference. Um you know, in terms of getting, I want to do nasal breathing. Nasal breathing is so important in fighting. If you can't do it, then you're you're definitely going to be at a disadvantage. Honestly, if I didn't have that, I think I, I could have potentially finished both my last two opponents. So, you know, uh, I'm not giving that as a, like, you know, as like a, an excuse or anything, but I just yeah. know that I'm looking forward to having, you know, 100% oxygen, uh, oxygen intake and hopefully slip my head more so I don't get broken again. <laughs> Like I remember the the Drikas thing. Everyone kind of like made fun of it because he came out and was like, "I'm going to be so much better and stuff," and people kind of laughed. But like, I I can only breathe out of one side of my nose, and like I'm getting it fixed. But I'm not a professional athlete, and it still affects me. So I can't even imagine how like much of a, a difference that one small thing changes for the the point that you made alone of being able to breathe out of your nose in a fight, right. like usually the tell for when someone's tired is when they start breathing out of their mouth when you can only do that like that's a huge difference like, yeah it's crazy. mate mate trust me like i see i saw adesanya breathing in through his nose in between rounds i was i was getting jealous mate i'm like that <laughs> easier i can breathe through his nose i wish if only yeah. do you know what i mean if some magical fairy came around and you know but obviously luckily uh, I got it done after the fight, and um, you know, but potentially in the fight, it could have, you know, maybe got knocked a little bit. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? At the end of the day, you you can't really predict how these things sort of affect you later on down the line. And um, yeah, I'm just, I've not felt the full effects yet, but I'm uh, I'm obviously looking forward to that. I think they said it'll be like li literally, you might not even be able to feel the effects within like even a month. They said it just depends because. Your nasal passages get very inflamed because obviously they've been fucking messing around with it and doing all sorts, cutting up my nose. Do you know what I mean? So, uh, um, but you know, the main thing, like, forget about the breathing. Aesthetically, I'm gonna look way better. And you know, for camera, that's that's pretty much. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm changing. <shit. laughs> of course, the breathing's the main thing. But listen, if you can get a plus of having it a bit straighter, why not? Do you know what I mean? Modeling career is back on. So, anyone doing any photo? Not some weird people doing photo shoots, though. Do you know what I mean? Like some weird guy, like in his house, like fucking in the corner, like, oh, let's do some photos. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Nothing like that. But... <laughs> Have you ever had, like, I've seen multiple fighters share this before. Have you ever had a weird DM from someone asking you to go and, like, either train with them, train in front of them, anything like that? I'm just, I think it might have been Jack Shaw and Paddy. Yeah I've, I've, yeah, I've 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 definitely heard 
Um, my friend Will gets a couple of those messages as well. I'm, I'm, I'm not I've, surprised. I've, 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 yeah, I've, I've had some people ask me for pictures of my feet. I've asked people to send me, all men as well, ask to yeah. send like um, used underwear, used training gear. I'll pay you. I'll pay you a large sum. I'm like, yeah. how much are we talking? <laughs> <laughs> if it, if it, were, if it, look, honestly, yeah. If it was like. 200,000 take whatever you want I'll wear it as much as you want and I'll fucking send it to you if you give me 200,000 do you know what I'm saying it's just weird do you know what I mean it's bit it's that kind of like the same concept between behind OnlyFans essentially like all the, these chicks are like you know showing off their bodies pretty much and geezers are just paying for it it's exactly the same concept here of some random dude in some woods somewhere asking me for my bloody underwear do you know what i mean it's a bit it's a bit weird i'd rather i'd rather some girl ask me for that but hey i guess we can't can't all get what we want eh? <laughs> no absolutely not um with the with the no surgery i i assume, how long had you had that booked in for what was it two weeks ago or something like that yeah, so it's two weeks ago. I had exactly two weeks ago. I had the surgery. Yeah. How long had you had that like booked in? Uh, no, it was literally straight after the fight. I would have liked to have got it done earlier, but um, right, I had to chase up the doctors to um to get it sorted. Um, so it ended up getting done a bit later than I would have liked. But my recovery started a lot earlier, so I'm I'm pretty thankful. Yeah, I just wonder because uh, like how long ago did you sign the the fight? Oh, what for Petrino? Um, yeah. This was about so. If you imagine, so two weeks ago, I'm now in my seventh week of no, in my sixth, sixth or seventh week of shoulder recovery. So it must have been about three weeks ago. I think it was right. probably about three weeks ago. Um, so judging by what the doctors had told me, by what my recovery would look like and how things should go. We kind of thought, okay, November fourth is just about doable. Like I'm talking right on the edge of it. Um, mm. But you know, the way it's going now, like 100, percent I'll definitely be able to. By the way that my recovery is going, I'll 100 percent be able to make it there and put on a good show in as well. Um, like you know, p- perform to, to 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 the best of my ability. I'll be able to train as I need to. I mean, bloody hell, you look at Dominic Cruz, he didn't spar at all. He just did pads and cardio his whole camp leading up to the Dillashaw fight. So, you know, we, we, we've got, you know, there's a lot of things that can be done and especially technically against a guy that's a brawler. You just need to, you just need to work on having the fitness and um, picking off your shots and landing the right things. And I've got the right people to train with. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be all good, mate. You mentioned Cruz then, which actually kind of relates to uh, something that I was going to mention later. We've got Max Holloway fighting this weekend, and he doesn't spar. Like, that, that's that's his whole thing. I think they do kind of like some like Thai sparring where it's just really light and full speed, but like 50% on all the shots and stuff like that. And it doesn't seem to have impacted his career like at all. Yeah. Which is, it's, new, it's a new thing, but I, I can see... I can see why it works, especially for a guy like him where he's so timing orientated that he can spar, but he doesn't need to go super hard. Yeah, I mean, look, the the way you got to look at it is if you've done all the requisite rounds, like your whole childhood or most of your teenage years or whatever, you've been training for a long time. You want to limit the amount of brain trauma you get. If you're getting beat up in training and getting full on blown shots, like it's just going to shorten your career. And not only shorten your career, but I'm talking your lifespan in general. Like it's going to cause a lot of brain damage. So if you've got, you know what a fight is like. It's just about getting the time and the range, the techniques, like working on your fakes. And then in the fight, then you can let it go full swing. Then you know, oh shit, it's a fight. I think the thing is to get, once you've done it enough, you've already got over the jitters of getting into a fight. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's the point of going into a fight knowing that you're going to have these, sometimes fear can can make you a very powerful person, like Khalil Roundtree in our fight. You know what I mean? So it can make you very, even more dangerous. And every other fight since, he's been an absolute animal. And that's, you know, a lot of, probably started off from fear and, and aggression, you know? So, um, 
yeah like again you you can be sick in the gym but all that matters is what you do on the day of the fight sean o'malley as well six weeks no grappling um very light sparring again just pad work and cardio i mean it's just it just shows that you if you've got a good team around you good people that can get you to drill the right things and look you've already got the jitters out of the way you've already had the hard sparring you know what it feels like so now you just gotta go in there and perform and then just make sure you're mentally right and then yeah you can get out there you mentioned uh khalil really briefly and i'm sure at some point if there isn't like a talking point specific for that week we'll do a whole episode and talk about the injury and the recovery yeah. and all that stuff but uh you shared the, the the video of khalil reacting to your success since the injury which i hadn't seen before um and uh it was just a, a thing that I, I hadn't even thought of that someone would have asked him or, or something like that, or whether he would have even paid attention. But like you can see, like him thinking about it, he genuinely, you know, still feels that not only is he happy to see you back in the UFC doing well, but like that that bond that he now has with your career is being tied to his. Like, what was your like? I said we'll dive into this like way yeah, yeah, at course. some point, but just initially off of that one clip, like what was your reaction to seeing that? Um, it was very. I mean, still at the end of the day, this is war. This is uh, this is uh, this is violence. This is you know when you're in there, you're, you're going out for blood. So I get that, and that's part of competition. But of course, you can see he's an emotional guy, as am I, and for him to acknowledge that you know that i had made my comeback and it made him made himself almost tear up and emotional because he probably knew how bad the extent of that shot was and he, you know at the end of the day you want to inflict pain on someone once you're in there but afterwards you know what i mean you're, you're just a regular person you know what i mean you have we have empathy we do care about people so he had that you can see he had that same level of care he was like fuck that could have ended his career but there's nothing i can do at the end of the day this is part of the sport you know this is the the risks we take so for him to actually acknowledge that and you could see you know he got emotional about that you know it, it meant a lot and um obviously i massively appreciate that for 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 him to be like that's really cool uh you know i think that did emotionally hit me as well and that that meant a lot to me as well and funny enough one of my friends brought it up he, he told me he said you know when he said you know without saying too much I think he realizes that potentially down the line that fight may happen again you know without saying too much potentially we could we could meet each other again in the cage so this is all respectful competition um of course he he he's a great man a great fighter and then obviously we have to leave it all on the line to go and beat each other up and inflict pain on each other and more damage you know what i mean this is just part of the fight game um but yeah as as i say it was very heartwarming for me to see him acknowledge that. Yeah, for sure. Um, so moving on to, we briefly touched on it then, um, but Petrino, 4th of November in Brazil, which uh, I was surprised to see. How are you feeling about going out there? Well, mate, I've literally went to Australia to fight an Australian, gone to America to fight an American, and now I'm going to Brazil to fight a Brazilian. I wonder when the time will come when the the man from London can fight in London. <laughs> All oh, these man. clubs that have been going on, you know. Uh, I know. I even... People keep complaining about how many how many London cars we're getting as well. Why won't they go anywhere else in the UK? I'm like, well, as much as I understand, the fact that you haven't even fought on one of the the UK the London shows yet is insane. Like this will <laughs> uh, this will earn it. This will earn it for me. Um, I have to admit. It's very obvious to see when they're trying to push someone. The undefeated, good-looking Brazilian powerhouse <laughs> knocking everyone out, you know, submitting them, you know, interesting fights. So, of course, they want... What's the closest show without going to London or, or the other... Where where can we, we build someone up? Oh, let's go to Brazil and make him fight in Brazil. Do you know what I mean? This guy, he's he's had a couple of wins, you know. They've been all right, you know. He's he's had a couple of losses. Oh, go on, we'll, we'll throw him to him. And I can tell you what, we ain't going there to to freaking just literally just lay over and get get our asses handed to us. We're over there to decapitate that man in front of his hometown. Do you know what I mean? He's very good. He's very confident. He's very explosive. But he's not seen the level 
of um, skill that I possess at all in the cage and the level of mental fortitude that I possess. If you won't meet a man that's as scary as I am now, especially, and how I will be when I get to that fight. It's mad though. Brazil, we're going away again. You know what I mean? We're wearing the away colours. Um, we're going to be wearing white again because we're going to be the blue corner. I've had literally about three tracksuits, white ones this year. <laughs> um, when am I going to get the black one? <laughs> but um, it's, uh, I'm excited about the fight because I did ask for it. So I did ask for it. I knew that there was a potential that I was thinking they would probably go to Europe somewhere which would make sense. But look, Nicholas Dalby is also fighting on that card. So he's also been with me on this last card. So you can see they try and group certain people together. But I think this will be the one that earns me the right to fight. Oh. I think uh, I think this will earn me... Sorry, someone just tried to call me. Uh, I That's think right. this will earn, earn me the right um, to fight in my hometown. But... I'm very excited. I get to go to Brazil, mate. I mean, it's a bloody beautiful country. They all get, you know, really like kind of, I love, I'm the underdog. I'm going in there into enemy territory. I freaking love that. Let's go. Let's freaking bite down our mouthpiece and give them a show. Um, but I'll tell you what, there's only one person that's going to come out on top and that is the Baltic gladiator, mate. <laughs> I uh, I feel like fighting in Brazil as well is a is a little bit of a, a bucket list thing for a lot of fighters. Like, does it does it mean anything to you specific? Like, not only is it a nice place to to just go and get to visit as well as fight, but fighting in front of a Brazilian crowd against a Brazilian, it's just it's always been this thing that yeah. goes hand yeah. in hand with the UFC. One thing I love, yeah, is actually traveling to different places. Mm. I loved Australia. Australia was like the best trip like of all of my trips uh, in the UFC. Maybe aside from my debut in Fire Island, this, we got to fight in front of a stadium. Like all the things that people normally do for a UFC event, like going to the stadium to do the weigh-ins in front of a crowd. Do you know what I mean? Like that was, that yeah. was sick. That just brought the intensity and gave me energy. Going to the hotel, the hotel was sick. The rooms were like ghastly but the actual <laughs> hotel was sick you know and um just being in that area where it's hot i think brazil's also going to be hot at that time so i mean I, I i love it and um yeah like you said it's a bucket list for most most fighters and it's also for mine i get to travel again i get to go into enemy territory again i get to go in there with a bit of a chip on my shoulder and um go out there to prove all the haters wrong and uh i love that like I, I love all of that. Like for me, I'm I embrace I embrace the uh, the scary and the unknown. And uh, for me, Brazil, especially Sao Paulo, because I've I've only been to Rio before, but it's a completely different world out there. So um, it'll be I think it'll be very similar to the Australia trip, and I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, I I haven't had too much uh, experience watching Petrino. Like when his name came up, I I recognised the name, but can't remember if I've actually seen his fights. Like, from what you know about him, how high do you rank him in terms of the other opponents you face? I mean, both in, in the UFC and throughout your career. He's the next logical step up. He fought on Contender Series. He won by knockout. He did get wobbled in that fight. Um, but he, you know, he finished the guy. Um, he brought some excitement into the light heavyweight division. He fought um, Anton Turkali. One by decision, faced some adversity in the second and the third, I believe. Um, but he weathered it. So he's very powerful, got, you know, good cardio, explosive, hits hard. Uh, he clearly hits hard because, you know, he, he did rock to Cali quite a lot. Pracnio, same sort of deal. Uh, he's all rounded, but for me, he's um, he's raw in those talents. He's not been doing MMA for very long um, or as long as I have anyways. So he's a bit more raw, but you know, he, like Jamal Hill, you could say potentially his skill sets are pretty raw, but he bloody uses them to the highest degree, you know, and he uses them very well. So it's the same here, you know, he's 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 raw with his talents. He's managed to accumulate a lot of skill set in a very short space of time. Same like Palga, really, um, except he's probably had a bit more experience, uh, I think, maybe than 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 Palga. Um, so. It's the next logical step up. 
I think I'm like, 30, my ranking changes all the time, but, uh, you know, it's within like the 30s, like 33, and he's like a couple ranks above me. He's always just mm. a couple of ranks above me. So it's the next logical step. The contract that I'm on, you don't want to go rushing fighting these top 15 guys like I did the first time around. So I'll take my time. Um, this one's a very tough opponent, but a very credible opponent that with a massive win will get you right up there because this is the one that they're all going to be watching. I believe we're going to be the featured prelim. So that Ooh, everyone's eyes going to be bam. on that fight. Yeah, that's a lovely spot to be in. Like I I always see people complain about featured prelim and uh, they, they've proven it multiple times that those are the ones most people tend to watch. I know specifically for the pay-per-views, but I would imagine just because of the timing that it's on, probably it is, is one of the higher kind of spots for viewership. Like that's a yeah. that's a lovely spot to be in, especially against a Brazilian in Brazil. Like people are going to tune in for that one. Yeah, I mean, it was exactly the same with Tyson Pedro featured prelim. Yeah, so history is about to repeat itself. Yeah, for sure. Um, the other thing I wanted to mainly touch on for this episode, I I, I don't know if you've had if you watched either of these fights, but. Uh, we recently had two former Cage Warriors guys compete on the Contender Series with George mm -hmm. Hardwick I have last watched. week. Yeah. Did yeah, you watch both? Watched I've watched... The, there's actually three fighters uh, that yeah. I've fought. Um, George Hardwick, Emre Sonmez, and, um, and uh, of course, Oban Elliott. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I completely forgot about Sonmez, to be honest, just because it was the same night as George. But... Um, Obviously, some some mixed results in there, but I feel like there's a there's a fair bit to get stuck into. Uh, I suppose we should start with we'll start with George. Um, yeah. I just a strange, just a strange fight. Like I I I I feel I'm I've, obviously we're all gutted for George because everyone wanted to see him go straight into the UFC. All the talk was about why is he even on the contender series? He's a cage warriors champ. He's got multiple defenses of the belt. Like he should just go straight in. And then just didn't really seem to settle at all. Like what was um, your, what was your take on it as someone he, who's been he, in? Yeah. Uh, he, he didn't, he didn't handle the speed of the other competitor. Um, he did get taken down, didn't he in the fight as well? Um, or did he not? Was that another fun? I'm not I remember I'm, his takedown defense being fairly good, but he might have he might have done, but I can't remember. Yeah, so so the guy was very fast. He used lateral movement very well. George notoriously has done well with those kind of guys, but a lot of the guys that he's fought have been a bit more flat footed than this guy. So this guy was very good, but he was probably the worst matchup in, tour, in terms of styles make fights sort of thing where the guy moved really well from side to side and George couldn't find the, the shot that he wanted to land, if you know what I mean. The guy was just picking him off from the outside. And um, I would have thought in a smaller cage, George would have done, done, uh, you know, done better with landing those strikes. But yeah, obviously... The guy just moves so well. Like George, you could see him trying to pinpoint the 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 correct shot to try and land, and obviously you just found it very hard to find that shot. Um, he's what I believe though that 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 fight does show that he's UFC caliber. You know, he's uh, he's obviously very talented, um, very good fighter. Just that fighter in particular just had his number. That's all it is. Some guys just have your number, and no matter how hard you fight, you know they just have some sort of attribute that doesn't play well to your style and that's exactly what i think happened in that fight yeah i just uh i remember thinking that it was a bit of a combination of of, of george looked a little bit just like unsettled throughout the fight but you can as much as you can say maybe george wasn't all that there you got to give the credit to his opponent who i thought was like fantastic on in the yeah. fight like his output was insane i couldn't believe that he was still throwing as much late into the fight and with speed accuracy like didn't ever yeah. take his foot off the gas like really impressive guy i know he's a he's a champion in uh i can't remember what promotion he's a champion is it uae in, you know, warriors like, or brave yeah one of those two right uh yeah I'll, I'll quickly look that up but yeah legit like really good guy yeah i mean look you're going to be fighting the top guys and that was kind of listen i do believe george will get his shot again that's like a fight for for him to put his name out there, and he did so. He he put on a good showing. 
I know they're still going to have their eyes on him. So for him, it just shows that now wasn't his time, but his time will come. He's only, what, 25, 26. He's very young. He's younger than than I was when I got to the, I got to the UFC. Essentially, I I had my first fight when I was 26. I got signed when I was 25, but it was like, you know, like I say, he, he's very early in the game. I reckon next year he'll definitely be in there, without a doubt. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, I should also mention that the the George and uh, we'll get on to Oban in, in a minute. I'm sure we'll have both guys on the, on the show at some point yeah, with us. They're both they're both hilarious dudes in their own way. Yeah, again. George George especially with his Palmo chicken Palmo. I love that. Uh, and I've actually spoken to Oban um, Oban and Emra when I was out in Vegas prepare um, for fight week. Because they oh, were doing really? their record, they were doing their recording for contenders here. So I got to speak to both of them, and I've I've actually uh, I've trained alongside Oban at um, Renegade, and I've, like I've I've always supported him. You know, he's a great fella and obviously a great fighter, and now he's a UFC fighter. So yeah, uh, let's let's touch on uh, on Emra, of course, because you reminded me about that. Um, his skill set is one of the most unique like game plans that i've ever seen like going to his knees and wrestling with his opponent over his shoulder like the whole fight which it didn't work out for him i thought the guy he fought was really good um but it's such a strange style to watch like i've never seen anything yeah. like it where his preferred <laughs> position is like with his opponent's yeah. knee next to his head <laughs> It's, do you know what? It's, it's just, yeah, it's just sad for me to see, man, because he is very talented and he's actually, like, you could say, quite a good friend of mine. Like, in a sense that we've always been around the circuit together, alongside right. each other, and we've always wanted the best for each other. We've been in the same locker room on many occasions in Cage Warriors, in UCMMA. You know, we've, we've been around each other. We've been training next to each other in the wrestling room, in the jiu-jitsu room for like years. I'm talking since I was like 19. Oh, Maybe wow. Even, okay. You know, like 19, 20. And now we're both out in Vegas. I'm fighting in the UFC and he's fighting for a shot to be in the UFC. It was quite a, a touching moment we had when we were in the UFC PI. Um, you know, we were in the sauna and just chatting like, Two, two guys from London just out here doing bits in Vegas. Do you know what I mean? So it's quite a special moment for me to just sit there with him. I was very, you know, I was gutted for him because I know he's much better. You know, he didn't strike as much and he completely gassed out. That's just what it, that's what it came down to. His wrestling is so good. Yeah. Mm. That he almost kind of relies on it too much. Um, he doesn't, I don't think he also believes in his striking as much. He was a kickboxer. That was his main thing. I don't know if anyone knows that, but he, his main attribute was his kickboxing. That's what made him so dangerous. And obviously him being a very good wrestler at the same time made him doubly as dangerous. So it's just very sad to see that he did not strike more. And you heard Brad Piggott in the corner saying, you need to strike more. You need to strike. Why don't you believe in your striking? And I think that was, that hit the nail on the head. Should have definitely struck more. I don't know why he didn't. Uh, that's what lost him the fight. Because then he wrestled and then gassed out. And the guy just capitalized on that. He won the first round for sure. He could have easily just like picked him off, landed some good shots, maybe take him down. You know, because he had his number on those things. He just got tired. So I feel bad for Emra. But I do also believe, like George Hardwick, that his opportunity will come again. He just needs to pick himself back up, which he is already. He's already training back in the gym go and win a couple of fights, get back on contender series and go and prove himself. Yeah, I, I was worried uh, tuning in the other day that it was going to be 0-3 for the Cage Warriors guys, which uh, is is so tough because <laughs> watching those guys come through is is, is the best thing, man. Um, but <laughs> Oban Elliott is, is made of another level of toughness. Like, Madman. One Absolutely. of the best fights I've seen on contender series. At that second round, to to not only survive the round, but then win the third as the fresher fighter. Yeah, he's he's uh he's I don't know what that that guy has got some serious mental resilience and toughness because, and I was I was shouting at the screen like, oh, come on, open, fuck's sake, get get through this second round, make it to the third. 
but he looked so crisp, man. His boxing looked amazing. His wrestling looked really good. And that guy, I think that what this has got to tell people is that a lot of people almost question the level of competition in Cage Warriors. There's the Octagon champion. And there's Oban Elliott, who wasn't even the champion. And he just beat him. <laughs> and do you know what I mean? Like, he beat him convincing. Like, in terms of convincingly, like, he clearly lost the second round, but he won the first and the third, for sure. So he probably, the... probably stops him if that goes to a fourth as well. Yeah. And if there was a bit more time on the clock, he would have finished it. You know, his heart and his fucking grit and his, you know, he's got, he can fight from both stances. I, I see Oban doing really well. You know, it's mad that DC was given a bit of stick after that fight. I saw somewhere on <laughs> I the I was going to mention somewhere. this next. Yeah. Oh, right. What is going on? What are you talking about? I mean, you can't just get into the UFC for just trying hard. I'm like, what has he got against English people, man? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? What has he got against the UK people? I mean, listen, yeah. But I mean, he, he, you know, he took the guy down. He landed some good shots. Like, that was a great fight. Um, I think he's, this is the thing. It's like, let's give him a chance to prove himself in the UFC. He's definitely ready for it. So I just thought, I thought that was a bit mad. But uh, look, at the end of the day, okay, cool. If, if 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 he doesn't turn DC his way after that fight, then give him one more. You know, give him some more in the UFC, and we'll, we'll see everyone's head start turning. Uh, he's very talented, great guy, and I mean the toughness on that kid is insanity. Like to think that the shots that he took and he just keeps firing back, and then in the first he says, "All right, fuck this, I'm 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 out here doing business now." Do you know what I mean? Like proper gladiator spirit. Do you know what I mean? He's. Uh, He's an animal, so fair play to him. I'm so happy for him, honestly. Yeah, me too, man. I, I first came across Oban when, um, whilst I was still at uni, I was covering the yeah. the Cage Warriors Academy Grand Prix for Cage Warriors, and he went on to win, I think it was the welterweight one, uh, before he moved back down to lightweight. And, like, it, he has not changed. Like, he is yeah. exactly the same person. And, like, I can't wait for... I, I'm sure you've seen this from afar but when paddy went from cage warriors to the ufc everyone's like oh who's this crazy character and for people that have been watching the uk scene for a long time they go that's not a character that's that's just paddy like he that's is like him. that 24 7 like i can't i think the same thing's gonna happen with oban and it is gonna I, be I, funny i definitely agree but you know what's mad yeah is that the american fans like they don't get to they don't get to be unlocked to to the characters that come out of the UK. We're all yeah. a bunch of fucking crazy beer on Saturdays, drinking motherfuckers out in the pub, like doing, you know, chanting songs, Sweet Caroline and, and yeah. all sorts. Do you know what I mean? Like we we are a mad, mad... I mean, listen, I'm also Lithuanian, but like if I'm speaking just from living in the UK for most of my life, you guys are a mad nation. Do you know what I mean? You, you guys are <laughs> like, like proper rowdy, energetic, but you really get behind your people. And, and, you know, like I say, the, the, this is, it's just mad that America's almost got like a curtain over that side of the world. Do you know what I mean? Until yeah. it gets introduced to them. And then they, they think of it like, how is this guy such a crazy? And it's just literally the normal personalities that are out here on a day-to-day -day basis. And um, that's what makes it a great time living over here. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Uh, but uh, yeah, I think he's going to go on to do big things. And um, yeah. I'm all for it, man. Look at that. They've got now another Welshman in the UFC. So what, there's Jack Shaw now and Oban Elliott, yeah? Is Jack Marshman still in the UFC? I don't think so. And there's also McKenna, Corey McKenna. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure yeah. Who else. That, those, those are the, I was thinking then, because I know that there's six Welsh fighters in total to fight for the UFC, but Mason's back in Cage Warriors. Uh, Brett Johns is in Bellator. And yeah, then yeah. Jack Marshman, I don't think he's in the UFC anymore. So yeah, they've got the three. They've got the three now. Um, which is I mean, first of all, incredible for, for Richard Shaw to have four fighters from his gym all go through all the way to there. Uh great for Jack yes. Jack oh, and amazing. his dad's gym. Like yeah. They've done an amazing that. job. I don't know how long they opened up that that new facility, but I mean, yeah, they've done an absolutely amazing job. Clearly the coaching the level of you know the level of coaching the level of talent coming up through the ranks in that gym i've not, i've also um there, there's a couple of people there's a guy called zach um reardon he's from i believe he trains there. i'm not sure if he does anymore but there's a couple of other like like um younger kids as well that that are training up there so you know they they got 
they've got some 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 tough people coming up. But it's the same like BST. They've got a lot of young guys at BST as well that are all coming up through the amateur ranks. So when they turn pro, they're going to have quite a stable of, of really good fighters. So, um, yeah, man, it, it, it's amazing to see that generation, generation after generation is just getting better and better. And uh, it also almost makes us oldies think like, oh, bloody hell, we're getting left in the dust out here. Do you know what I mean? Now, now it's me having to try and keep up with the young guys. Do you know what I mean? It used to be the other way around. So <laughs> as time goes on, obviously. But yeah, it's, it's, it's great to see the level of talent coming up. Yeah, the, the, the thing that I remember from watching the Obam fight is uh, I remember thinking, oh, I'm just, I, I hope that he just settles early on and that it isn't like George's fight where he just can't seem to get going because... The, the guy he fought, Brito, is a scary knockout artist. So yeah. it was a worrying one. I think he threw a head kick or a big overhand or something and, and Oban did his trademark duck and gave him <laughs> one of those. And I was like, okay, all right, we're good. We're good. Like, he's, in, he's in this. And then, yeah, absolutely ridiculous fight. Um, also, just the, the post-fight interviews where Laura Sanko is trying to chat to him and he's just flexing. Just Yeah, I know. <laughs> He's just absolutely mate, but what you gonna, mate, trust me people don't understand the adrenaline is like a freaking drug after you win do you know what I mean especially when you win big and especially when you come back and you know you put on a performance like that I'll be fucking flexing all over the place do you know what I mean it's, it's just it's just mad that I haven't started flexing all over the place you see a load of <laughs> mad dance moves from me and backflips but you know there, there'll be a time when I'm going to be bloody flexing all over the place like that 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 was well deserved I think I think everyone enjoyed that honestly <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I suppose you touched on it already about um, Georgia and, and Emra being, you know, that, that they'll get another shot and, and hopefully should be back in and around the mix within the next, you know, six months, maybe a year, something like that. Um, I suppose because you've been to Cage Warriors and then to the UFC and then you went back to Cage Warriors for, for guys like George and Emra. How did like what did you learn the most from that process of going back to where you came from? Yeah, it was tough. Uh, I wanted to go somewhere new. I'm not going to lie mm. about that. Me and my manager talked about many different opportunities that were presented on the table. We had many chats, um, and a lot of the chats involved. We want to get you back to the UFC. Don't you worry. We'll get you back there. And I remember then we we, we ultimately decided to sign back with Cage Warriors. And I'm, at first I thought, bloody hell, I'm, I'm going back to where I kind of started. But sometimes you need to you need to go back in order to go forward. And I just kind of saw it as, okay, I've got to take this as a new opportunity, uh, almost like a, a reinvigoration of my career and um, go out and prove myself. Look, one big win against a top guy, I can get a title shot. And that's exactly what happened. And I knew that. I knew Lee Chadwick was a harder opponent. I knew who the hell's going to want to fight me in Cage Warriors anyways. That was one of the main things I was thinking. They're going to have to bring someone from across across the ocean uh, or someone who's a tough veteran from the UK. Uh, so <laughs> it's mad how everything just all like went to plan, you know, I guess you could say. Um, it was a bit hard for me mentally. I'm not going to lie because I'm like, I'm a UFC fighter. You know what I mean? Like I'm not. I'm supposed to be there, but you know, I, I understand that it was a process and it was what was needed. And I needed to find my footing, learn how to fight more like what I'm supposed to with those. It's almost like I had a reinvigorated amateur career in in a way, because you know, amateur, you don't really care too much about winning or losing. You're about learning. Like, yeah, you, if you're very talented and very good, obviously you can rack up a load of wins. Obviously, you don't want to lose because you want to put a good standing for your pro career. But it's almost like that. I need to make my mistakes, learn my, find my footing. And, you know, I managed to do that on, in Cage Warriors. And then, you know, we're, we're, we're back in. So I think it does prove, the thing is I would, wouldn't be able to go to Contender Series. I would, I would have had to get re-signed. So, and I was also very fortunate and lucky that I got the opportunity that I did. And I capitalised, you know. So you don't get those opportunities often. But if you're prepared, you, you will get them. You just got to keep working hard, and that's exactly what I was thinking when I was getting ready to, uh, to, to 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 get back in the you know like after that Cage Warriors title win, I was like I just need to stay ready because fuck me, there's some cards in outside of the US, and potentially if one of them drops out, and again next thing you know that's exactly what happened. So the best thing is preparation when it meets opportunity is always a beautiful thing, as Conor McGregor said. So. Uh, that's the best thing for those fighters, just to always stay prepared 
keep winning, keep racking up that experience, and then your time will come. You know. Yeah, and uh, and obviously same kind of question, but slightly different circumstances for Oban, who hopefully I don't know whether the end of the year is going to be doable. I hope so. Um, and and these contender series fighters, they always tend to turn them around super fast. Like they they announce it at the start of every show of like, oh, this guy who fought last week has got a fight booked in two three yeah. weeks. So. I, I hope he gets to go back out within uh, the end of the year just to really cap off an incredible year for him in his career. But uh, yeah, what would you, what would you say to him as somebody who has been through? I suppose you didn't have the contender series thing, so it's a little bit different. But you know, you had the, you also had the benefit of the the Cage Warriors title fights, which uh, you know as close to being prepared for the UFC as you can really be. So, uh, what was like the main thing that you wish you would know you had uh, known going into your UFC debut? Um, my UFC debut. It's not necessarily anything that I would have known. It's not necessarily anything that oh, I wish I would have known this. Um, the lessons that I learned were almost like very needed lessons. The only thing I would have known. <laughs> as dark as it sounds is that people are cunts like you know pe people are people are are actually not what you you think they are a lot of times and you've got to be very wary and you've got to learn to you to to whip out the red lightsaber every lap every now and then because that's what life is you know what i mean you've got to realize that people are always out for themselves uh, these are very dark things but they're just for me they're just so true yeah of course you can go in there you can be energetic you can be happy but when people are in there they're, they're going out to kill do you know what i mean they're going out there to absolutely whoop their opponent and if you're not the guy that is is going to destroy you you know and that's just what that shows so there's a lot of things like i said after 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 uh so going into my ufc debut i just i didn't have the right mindset for fighting uh, whereas I do now, but I had to have those losses and that bad situation in order for me to get that. So I feel like it was much needed. Some people already have it. So then they go on and do it like Conor McGregor did it straight away. And some people can just do it straight away and fair play to them. That's their journey. My journey is just completely different. And this is my experiences. I didn't have, you know, I've been brought up very well. You know, um, I, I went to private school when I was younger. Um, I went to America when I, you know, for school as well. So, you know, my parents have taken care of me and, you know, they, they've obviously wanted, they've told me to work hard all the time, but they've they wanted me to do well. So um, I've always tried to see the good in people. I've always tried to be empathetic and, and caring towards people. But then you realize that people don't offer you the same level. Of, and I still, to this day, I'm in still experiences times where people like to shit on you um and it's a, it's the case where you don't let that make you upset and depressed you just accept that understand that and use that as you know use that as almost fuel on how you're gonna go about your life in the future and how you're gonna navigate your way around this world but the people who are close that you love they're your close people like yourself kyle do you know what i mean so it's like the people that are close that are in your circle they care about you they want you to do well you keep those people with you, but the people who are who are a little bit shady or do some bullshit to you, you already know. But they ain't part of your they ain't part of your clique, and you got to be wary and be on your toes about them. But you know, like I said, this is all this is all art of war, mate. Like literally, this, this is what life is about. It's all art of war, mate, and this uh, it's having to just navigate your way around these treacherous waters sometimes. So that is, if I would say, to have a bit of a darker mindset would be something that I wish I would have had in my first UFC run. Hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have predicted that, but then I don't know the the behind the scenes ongoings and stuff like that. I should briefly touch on uh because I forgot to mention it earlier, the video you put up on the, the channel of the like fight week, like uh like mini documentary. I thought that was great. Uh like really interesting stuff. Um I knew exactly what to expect just from being around you guys at the cage warriors event in london a few weeks ago of of knowing the kind of like the the team atmosphere i was like okay well this is going to be a lot of fun um yeah. and, and that's 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 what i got so yeah when yeah when 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 you got will with you and danny my other coach uh, and my dad i mean the whole crew were a bunch of absolute knuckleheads where you know where we're complete maniacs and you know the the massive 
the like you know so many different like you know vibrant personalities you put that together and it makes a hell of a fight we can tell you that and uh it, it was night nice. the man who made all of those videos steven i've got to give him a massive shout out steven preble um because i literally met him at ufc london um and we just got chatting for like about 40 like you know about 40 minutes watching the fights like in between the breaks or in between the fights and then uh yeah next thing you know he messaged me on instagram saying yo i'd love to do some recordings for you and then you know also later i come to find out that you know he's got motor neuron disease which is very sad as you know that's a you know that's a life-threatening disease and um but that didn't change that, that wouldn't have changed any of my you know i still would have had him to come down to record anyways but i just thought you know and then i thought you know what would be an amazing opportunity this guy is such a lovely guy He's just come come and done some recording for me how can we make this even better and then we ended up flying him out to vegas with us and he did an amazing job as you can see his editing skills the recording uh you know even like subtle things such as like the lighting that you you know like the settings and everything he did everything like perfectly the the music matched the mood uh so yeah he done an amazing job and i appreciate uh you also watching it and tuning in because uh, yeah uh it was an amazing experience i love watching it my dad's seen it probably about a hundred times by now all the views <laughs> on that video are probably from my dad but honestly um I love watching it because it makes me relive that week. And it was an amazing week. Um, I just wanted to touch on actually something real quick, uh, just because I didn't mention it. Uh, I said I like to fight away. In Australia, it was an amazing experience because, I don't know, it's like a different country, like you're back in the UFC. Like There was a quite a good vibe around it. I had literally just dad and Will. Danny couldn't couldn't make it to that fight, but I had just my dad and Will to that fight. But the, the vibes, the energy was really good. And then... Um, but then uh, for Vegas, I feel like I had some demons that I had to conquer, you know, and from the injury, from everything that had happened there before, uh, I felt like after that five conquered those demons, now I can go out there with a bit of a better, fresh mindset. Whereas before it was kind of like, there's always something probably subconsciously attacking me, you know, uh, mm. just from going in there. So I just thought I'd touch on that. I think it's also a good thing that I'm going to Brazil because you know, now we're going to another country in a big cage in that whole environment that's very similar to Australia. Yeah. So, yeah. And then and then hopefully London, I assume they'll be back in March. They usually are. So a little bit of a break from Vegas for a while. I'm sure that'll do do a little bit mate, of good. I'm, yeah. I'm gunning for that one, mate. Just get me on the mic after a win. Get me on the mic after a win. Let me let me just speak to the people. Let them know this Lithuanian born British bred <laughs> athlete is out here. Do you know what I mean? I feel like I feel like I need to connect a little bit more with the British fans because there's still a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of fans that still to this day don't even know that I speak English. <laughs> I think it's mad, you know. So uh, it'd, it'd be nice to kind of almost reintroduce myself to people. Like, hey, how's it going? I know my name's pretty long, but <laughs> just just hear me out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, I've, we've spoken about this before, but I didn't even know that when I used to do stuff for Cage Warriors, I had no idea that you. I I, I think I had seen you representing the the UK flags and stuff like that, but I had never like just put two and two together of like, yeah, yeah. But what does he actually sound like when he speaks? Which is like such a stupid like, thing. How stupid... hard is this interview going to be? And then as soon as we got into it, it's like, bloody hell. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is plain sailing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, speaking of that, actually, really quickly, to go back to what you were saying about the the fight documentary, the, the fight week one. I had watched it when it came out, and I was like, oh, wow, this is really impressive. And then... Um, just as I was scrolling through, just to just to check up on a few things earlier, I came across the the post fight interview that you did after the the win over Zach. Um, so I clicked on that, and you you mentioned uh, what was the guy's name that made the film for you? Uh, Stephen Preble. Steve, you mentioned Stephen in the post fight interview, and I was like, oh, I because I watched the fight and then never put it together that that's what he was doing there for you and stuff like that. So it gave me way more appreciation for. The, the film just to be like yeah it's it it was a it was a great a great yeah. watch overall and like uh like really really good quality stuff as well like i, I, I like appreciate that you see like i said he's, stuff. 
him and his team are extremely talented. And this is also, this was a chance for me to kind of, you know, advertise his work to the world because it's amazing. Yeah. I wanted people to know about that, not just about my story. I wanted people to know about how how amazing his editing skills because look, it looked like something you would see on Netflix, you know? Like, yeah. th but this is the vision that I had as well. And the vision is still ongoing because it is our goal and our dream to 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 be able to have a Netflix documentary over, like going throughout my whole career and leading up to a title fight and a win. That's when it will actually mean something for, for everyone, for the average job, when you win the belt and it's like, oh, let me find out more about this guy. Where, where where's mm. he from? What's, you know, and uh, this is like, this is just the start. This is just the build up towards that bigger picture and to see the quality that he's had. I think we're well on our way. And the way my career is going now, we're also well on our way. So, um, yeah, man, speak it, believe it, receive it. You know what I'm saying? I look forward to the time where people go, I want, I need to learn more about this, this UFC champion. And they, they go on the Netflix documentary and it starts with Take Me Out. That's going to be, that's oh going to be a God. fun time. <laughs> I, had to, I had to mention it that. at least once in the first episode, you know. I love that. I love that. Do you know what? And weirdly enough, you say that. Uh, how strange is this? So I was on the show with three guys. Um, I, can't, I don't know why the hell uh, one of their names is like literally completely going off my uh, off my head. Anyways, let's let's just. Sometimes I forget I forget stuff. But anyways, uh, I haven't spoken to that guy in ages. But the, the other two, uh, one of them is Luke. It's this brand here, One Athletic. Oh really? Um, so yeah, he's now starting his own brand and he's technically sponsoring me. Um, it's very nice of him. He's got really good quality, amazing stuff. And he provided our track suits on fight week, which I thought was amazing of him. Um, he's from Take Me Out. And also, I literally just about, just before the nose surgery, I went out with Nathan. Um, I don't know if you remember him from from, from my episode, but uh, yeah. So I hadn't seen him like literally for like years. I'm talking years. And he'd been following my career. And we've been talking about going out for like ages. And then next thing you know, we end up on a Wednesday night going out. We are literally up to like six in the morning. I got back home. Obviously, I drank quite a bit. Um, I got home at 6.30 and I hear a knock. On. So the the point of the story is that I went on. I went to see that guy from, you know, take me out, guys. are still in the loop, if you will. <laughs> oh, Ryan. Ryan was the last guy's name. Sorry. But anyways, this guy, Nathan, we had a sick time. It's like as if, we'd like you know, like good friends. Like we're more mature. You know, we've got a good mindset. And we're also, we're also wacky, crazy geezers as well. Like, like we're, up, we're up till six in the morning on a Wednesday night. Seven in the morning. Yeah. So I just got into bed at like 6.30 in the morning because I had clients in the morning. Yeah. To teach. Yeah. At nine. And um, I hear a knock on my door at seven. I wake up, I check my phone. It's like it's like seven o'clock. I'm like, what's going on? My dad goes, Modestus, you saw here. I'm like, <laughs> oh, my God. Like, really? <laughs> Are you for real? <laughs> I literally, I walk, I walk out of my bed. I'm literally in like my underwear, like going out the door. And this guy's like, do you want to put some trousers on? I'm like, oh, sorry. Because I was literally, <laughs> I was completely out of it. I was still half asleep. And yeah, they took bloods and my piss. And I literally had to wait for like an hour and a half because I literally just pissed like everything that I needed to before I went to sleep. And then I had to like down like a litre and a half of water just to get him some some pee for his for his laboratory findings. Do you know what I mean? And my blood at all at literally seven, eight o'clock in the morning. Then I took a quick nap and then I had to go and teach clients. So life of a fire, you lot, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> whilst i'm recovering from surgery obviously i wouldn't do that on a normal you know occasion but anyways yeah uh, really all right well you know? <laughs> yeah I, I man i can't believe that you still stay in contact with the people that you that that just blows my mind on itself but they're great people honestly they're all amazing and we've all somehow in the loop have always kept in contact with each other or at least i've tried to do that um and yeah, so it's, it's worked out well. And I'm, I'm thankful for that. It means, you know, you meet on a TV show and you made friends for life, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. Uh, sweet. Uh, I'm sure we'll get into that at some other, yeah, some no other doubt. point in no time. Doubt. Um, I should say as well that if you're listening to this on Spotify or watching it on YouTube, we're on both of those and Instagram. Um, leave us a comment of who you want us to have on as the first guest. 
we won't have a guest for the first couple just because we got a bunch of stuff to catch up on and stuff like that. But um, then we'll get then we'll get somebody on. I, I have a feeling that it won't be long before Will Curry makes an appearance, which I'm very excited for. I do believe we should have him on first. Uh, I, I mean, I, not, not to say that, like, then. you know, everyone else's suggestions are, are not going to be well taken. But obviously, since he's the closest, you know, to me uh, in terms of training partners, I think we should definitely get him on. We definitely need to get Danny Batten on here as well. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of good names out there, man. We, we've, we've, got, we've got quite a collection to... And trust me, the conversations to be had with those two especially is going to be a madness. So my dad as well, you know. So, you know, we, we, we've got a lot of people in the loop. And then obviously guys like Oban, uh, Jack would be an amazing to get on here. So, you know, like I say, the Baltic Gladiator is throwing out all the suggestions now. So, um, but yeah, if there's any more, obviously, <laughs> like Carl said, just leave them in the comments. <laughs> Yeah, well, well, we can always, you know, if if there's a certain guest that people really want on, we'll we'll, we'll make some kind of list of, of people where yeah. we want to get them. And then yeah. obviously it depends on when people are fighting and stuff like that. But I think we've got quite a bit of time before yeah. that that's too important. So, yeah, all good. All right. First episode done and dusted, mate. Sick. <laughs>